Okay, like just logistically speaking, there are 10 questions. Two of those questions are graphing. Those graphing questions are like 14 points a piece because they've got those multiple parts where you have to find the asymptotes and all that good stuff. And then the rest of the eight questions are nine points a piece. There's no calculators whatsoever, no scientific, no graphing, no calculators, which means there's none of the interest problems or anything like that. And if you are at home, I need you to print the answer sheet that's on your quiz review. If you don't have a printer, then I need you to at least take a piece of paper and make it look like that answer sheet. Yeah. Yeah, hard copy notes, you're gonna be in lockdown again. So hard copy notes, and you'll use that scrap paper. If you are taking it in person, I already have your answer sheet and I have like a hard copy test for you. You just need hard copy notes. You will have, and this is different this time, you will only have 20 minutes this time, okay? These logs are a lot of mental math, they take a lot less time. So you're gonna only have 20 minutes where normally you have 30 minutes, so keep that in mind when you're getting ready and you're working like your pace needs to be a little bit faster especially on those mental math ones um the good news is that means that i can answer some questions before you take it so if you didn't start your quiz review yet and you're doing it tonight tomorrow when we come in i will start by answering questions and then we will take your quiz so you have a little bit of give there at the beginning let's see if i can zoom up so what i want to start with is the graphs because that's what your quiz starts with okay I will say that the left ones are the exponential. Those are from 5.1, and the ones on the right are from 5.2. Those are your logs, okay? But they are going to be 1 and 2. So they come at the beginning, and then the rest fall. So it's not necessarily in the order of your sections. So with the exponential ones, oh, let me duplicate that graph before I draw it. is E, like the graph of E. Yeah. So it would come by way of like LN. Okay. Oh. And are there going to be, like, are we gonna see the E You're definitely gonna get an E, yeah. So if we do that, we just like um, round to three, right? Yep. Always, or like if we give them the fraction, and if it's like, cause if it's not, do we just round it like the two points? If you're plugging in points on a graph, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Correct. If you are answering it like, which no, that's not going to happen. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I'm not even going to introduce that scenario because it's not going to happen. All right. So the first one, these exponentials, remember with exponentials that we are going to not only graph, but you're going to find your horizontal asymptote. You're gonna find the range and you're gonna find the y-intercept. So for both, I mean, you're only gonna get one exponential, one log, but for the two examples that we're gonna do today, we're gonna do both. So remember that the horizontal asymptote relates to your vertical shift on your exponential functions. Remember the vertical shift happens after the exponent. So that negative one tells me I'm shifting this down one. If there was no, like on B, you'll see there's no vertical shift. That means my horizontal asymptote is at zero. But because this is a down one, it means my horizontal asymptote is at negative one. Can you see that? That's hard to see. Is that how they would give the Oh, sorry, it should be Y equals negative one. Is that how they would give the question? It's gonna say graph the function, find A, horizontal asymptote, B, range, C, and y-intercept your answer sheet has the graph on it and three blanks and it would just give you y equals yep so if it's all if it's in exponential form it's a horizontal asymptote and if it's in like log form yep it's vertical mm -hmm. yep and it says it in the instructions okay so then i'm gonna put i'm gonna go ahead and do my t-chart remember with exponential we plug in for x so I'm gonna plug in two minus one plus one minus one, two zero plus one minus one, and two one plus one minus one. So negative one plus one becomes two, I'm sorry, becomes zero, two to the zero is one, one minus one is zero. 
2, 0 plus 1 is 2 to the first. 2 minus 1 is 1. And 2, 1 plus 1, that's 2 squared. Minus 1 is 4 minus 1, that's 3. So negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 3. It gets as close to that horizontal asymptote as it can without touching it. So if I had plugged in like a negative 2, that 1 half would be there. So it's going to get lower. Correct, right? Because domain is all real numbers. It goes left to right on exponential functions. The range is vertical. So everything vertical related. And range is up and down or down to up? Down to up. Correct. Can't you find your range based on your assumption? Yep. You just, if there's a negative in front and flips it upside down, now your range is going to change. So what's the lowest, like what's my range? Um, negative, one. negative one with a parenthesis, always parentheses to positive infinity. I don't know, but it's good that it did, right? Yeah. yeah. That's always the questions I get wrong on the test because I didn't understand. So now you don't have to anymore. <laughs> okay, so then the y-intercept, yeah. Sorry, um, how do you find the asymptote again? It, the asymptote comes from your vertical shift on your exponential function. So if there's no shift, like you're going to see in B, there's nothing added or subtracted after the exponent, then my horizontal asymptote is at zero. If it's minus, then it shifts down, so it'd be like, you know, whatever that number is, that's going to be what y equals. Whatever that vertical shift is. Because it's at negative one. Everything got shifted down to negative one. Because of the vertical shift. Oh. Yep. But you, but you didn't graph that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the vertical shift is like kind of like the, it's not going to make very much sense, but like the vertical, like the starting point. Sure. Of where it would go. It won't go below that. It won't pass. Correct. So, but the arrow has to end at the negative one on the horizontal? It needs to get as close to that asymptote as it can. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then the y-intercept, remember, we can get from our graph, or it's really easy, just go to the middle point, which is 0, 1. So the answer is going to be all this. You're going to actually see a little t-chart, and then the graph. Oh. We just find the domain. Not for the, the exponential functions. We did one like that yesterday, right? One, we had one over 625 or something, right? That's the one we worked out at the end. So then, it didn't, like, match up so then you have to plug in extra points. Okay, so yeah. you would do like... So if it didn't give you enough of a curve, you're going to keep plugging in those points. And you can't go below what the horizontal Correct. Is, right? Correct. I mean, you, I mean, it won't. You'll never get a point below it. Like, I could plug in all these X's, and I'll never get a point below negative one. Okay. It will be like so teeny you, tiny, but it will right. never go below negative one. Okay. Um, so I All right, so B says Y equals 3 fourths X, 3 fourths of the, the X power. Is there a vertical shift here? No, which means where's my asymptote? Zero. So horizontal asymptote at Y equals zero. Mm-hmm. It won't be. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I won't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I won't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now I plug in, right? So I'm going to do 3 fourths to the negative 1. It's going to be 3 fourths to the 0. And it's going to be 3 fourths to the first. What happens with the negative 1 and that fraction? Good. It flips it. 4 thirds. What happens? Three fourths to the zero. One. Three fourths to the first. Three fourths. Now we go to the graph. This is one and one third. So negative one, one and one third is here. 
0, 1, and 1 and 3 fourths. So this time, because it's a fraction on the inside, it's actually decreasing. The, the, it's flipping direction. I'm getting as close to the x-axis on this side, and then it's raising on that. If I had plugged in a negative 2, it would have been even bigger. So it's going to increase that way. So if you are unsure and you have extra time, because you want to make sure you get to all the questions. Don't get hung up on these graphs and then not answer a nine-point question at the end. You want to work all the way through, and then if you need extra points, plug them in. Mm -hmm. If it was like negative three fourths to the negative, it, it, the base is not going to be negative. We're not going to get negative bases. No. Okay. Because remember, the negative would get applied at the end. So you, if the, is the negative inside the parentheses with the three fourths in this scenario, or is it on the out, or is it just negative three fourths to the x? There like, are no parentheses. In your head, does it look like this, or does it look like this? If there's no parentheses, then you oh, raise the... It's in, it's, it's um, without the parentheses. So if it doesn't have the parentheses, then you would raise them all to these powers. You would get these numbers, but then you would put the negative on at the end. So that would be negative, that would be negative, that would be negative. So but you're not going to have, have a negative base. With a negative x. Oh, the negative x one, it just flips it. So it would become 4 thirds to the x. Because I got one. Oh, well, I guess technically I'd have to get two. If there's a negative exponent, right, then when I plug in negative 1, it'd be negative, negative 1. So it becomes positive 1. So when you plug it in, if the exponent's negative, if you plug it in, just like... Oh, okay. I get it. Yeah. Okay, so where's, what's my range? Zero, Zero to positive infinity. And where's my y-intercept? Zero, one. Zero, one. Good. So here's, here's your benefit. Like, get, your, get a reference sheet and put exponential. Sh works with the vertical shift. You know, like, help yourself out. Mm -hmm. You get the opportunity to do it. How is that the range here if it's not positive? So what's the lowest point that you see on this graph? Zero. It gets as close to zero without touching it, right? Because you can't touch it. So that's why it gets a parentheses. And then what's the highest? Zero. Right. Does that make sense? All right, now we go to logs. So again, this is in 5, 2, but they are grouped together at the beginning. So with logs, we have a vertical asymptote. We have restriction on domain. And we have an x-intercept. And it will ask that. A, vertical asymptote. B, domain. Actually, maybe it's A, domain. B, vertical asymptote. Whatever the order is, but it's there. Like, dom like domain, for the first one, there's no restriction. It's negative infinity to positive infinity on, on exponential. But on oh, log, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, we restrict it. Range here would be all real numbers. Yeah. Okay, so, and remember, we figure out where's our vertical asymptote, and it's based on what's in the parentheses next to the log. So where's our vertical asymptote? X equals 1. So vertical asymptote at 1. With logs... We plug in for y after we convert to exponential. So if I take this log base 3 of x minus 1 and I convert it to exponential, the 3 is going to come over. First of all, there's nothing after the parentheses. There's nothing in front of the log. It's just log with the happy little family of the x minus 1 that's stuck together. So that is all one thing. So the 3 comes over and picks up the y, drops the log off, and I get x minus 1. And then solve for x, so add the 1. So 3 to the y plus 1 equals x. That's what I'm plugging into. So 3 to the negative 1 plus 1, 3 to the 0 plus 1, and 3 to the first plus 1. So if there wasn't parentheses, it would be added to... You'd have to move it to the y first and then pick it up. So domain, you're always going to want to look at your graph because it depends on if you're on the right side of this line or the left side of this line. Yeah. 
but the y intercept, uh, x intercept's already here. It's 2, 0. Just for the first two. Yeah. Is yeah. When there's a number in front of the log, is that the only time you take it up with the y? Or are there any other times where If there's a number in front of the log, like add it or subtract it, is that what you mean? Like it could be 2 plus log here, or it could be this plus 2 at the end. Those would move first. Then you'd pick it up. So then you only leave it when it's in parentheses? Correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Would there ever be a time, like, on the homework we had an example where it was negative log? So is it possible? Yes, on the quiz tomorrow, not happening. Yes. We've had our meeting. I've had a meeting. Yeah. Right. Wait, not on your quiz. Can we still go over? Yeah. Miss Chris Weiser? Yeah. What if log is negative? What do you do? <laughs> so you would multiply everything by negative 1. I'll just, like, I, if we have time, I'll get to it. But it's not on your quiz, so I don't want to confuse you too much. You would multiply everything by a negative one, so the y is gonna be negative. So when you pick up the y, you're actually picking up a negative y. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, what about two, zero, and four, one? And here comes my curve. Oh, that one's rough, but you know what it's supposed to look like. So what's the domain here? One, two, and three. Good. Correct. Okay, yeah. So logs in the Y. Are the Y's it, It's confusing, right? Like, how would you know where to plug that in? That's why we do the Y. Okay, so now we've got LN. What is the same as LN? Log, log base E of X minus 2. Because we're going to graph this, what are we going to make that approximate to? 3. 3. Log 3X three minus 2. So I'm going to approximate it. This is the one we just, okay, okay. What is just log? What? Log, log, base, log base 10. 10. Log base 10. So if it said log, it's log base 10. If it's ln, it's log base e. Like if it's just an ln or just a log? If it's the word log. Like mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we went over so much on Monday and I'm just all right, before I can pick up that Y, I have to do what? Plus well, actually, let's do the vertical asymptote first. I mean, the horizontal asymptote. Is there something inside the parentheses? No. So it's at zero. Okay. So now I would have to move the two. Then the three is going to pick that whole thing up. Because that's how you, that's the conversion. The conversion is put it into exponential and get rid of the log. Okay. So by putting it into exponential, we eliminate the log. So that's why whenever we put it back into log form. The, the log, log comes back. It was exponential, log. now there's a log. Yeah. So the log is just there to like kind of tell you. It's just another way to write it. The log is just there to tell you like, okay. This is log. Put it back into exponential. Mm -hmm. You can solve. Yep. That's. All right, so now I plug in. So 3 to the negative 1 plus 2, 3 to the 0 plus 2, and 3 to the 1 plus 2, 3 to the 1st, that's 3, 3 to the 2nd, that's 9, 3 to the 3rd, that's 27. 3, negative 1, 9, 0, and 27 all the way over here, 1. We don't even have to plot it exact. So what I don't have, which is what's happening here, right? There should be some downward shape. It's teeny tiny, but we know that this graph is gonna come close to that vertical asymptote without touching it. If you want to plug in points, you can. You'd have to plug in like negative two, keep going that way, because they get smaller this way, so I can plug in points this way. But at least if you have those three points and you know my curve's gonna go down like that, you can draw it like that. And that's enough. Do we have to graph the always going down to the end? 
I mean, you want to plot it so you know that's the direction it's going. What's the domain? Uh, Zero to positive infinity. And the x-intercept, and it's not exact because we're approximating it, but it's nine zero. Really, it's e to the second to zero if it was exact, right? But I'm telling you right now, you can approximate it. Isn't it a little squiggly for a thousand? Nah. Okay. Wait, why is it the first coordinate that's x equals two? Because there, this is a vertical shift now and not a horizontal shift. So if it's inside the parentheses with the log, that's what's going to cause the shift, which is going to change the vertical asymptote. So other than that, the vertical asymptote is always x equals 0 if it's like not in parentheses? Correct. So, because think, look, exponential, the shift happens with the up and the down, which is outside of the exponent. With log, the shift happens if it's it, left or right, which is inside the parentheses. Because how would you? Yeah. What was that, Sophia? Um, for the ln, it's always three. Like you We're going to approximate it to be three. So in the world of ln, if we weren't graphing it and we had a calculator, we would keep that as log base e. But because we don't have a calculator, if you see ln on your quiz and you have to graph it, you're going to approximate it as log base e. I mean, log base three. Okay, thank you. Yeah. When we approximate for e on the x-intercept line, can we put the approximation and just put e to the second power? I would take either answer, Brianna. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so just a quick couple, like, quick things. Remember, anything to the zero power is one. Anything raised to the one half is the same thing as saying the square root. And anything to the negative one is moving it to the bottom. So it becomes one over whatever that is. If it was, like, the fraction that we just did where it was, like, three-fourths and it's negative, then we switch them. So in the exponential part of the quiz, and you're going to get, like, more than just these two, but in these exponential part of these, you're going to want to change the base. So this is where your one-to-one -one property comes into play. So if I wanted to change 64 and 4 to have the same base, what could I do? This could be 4 to the third raised to the x plus 1 equals 4 to the 2x minus 3. Then I distribute this to both, so I get 4 to the 3x plus 3 equals 4 to the 2x minus 3. The bases are now the same, so we set the exponents equal to each other. I forgot when we did this. Okay, that, okay. Now I, now I can always understand you. Oh, good. All the questions that I was asking. Okay. Oh, okay. So on the, on the quiz, it's just going to say x equals, you'll give me just the value. So you just give me like just negative 6. You could have also changed them to both be two. It would have worked like two to the second and then what is that, two to the sixth? Like it would have also worked, but I would keep it as easy as you can. So the E's were in this exponential part. They are already the same base, right? It's just a base. So I set the exponents, ooh, sorry. Set the exponents equal to each other. So X equals X squared minus six. What do I do with that? At the factor, yeah. If we put all the all the powers combined. As soon as you see a squared and a non-squared x, that's your indication you're going to have to factor. So I'm going to get everything to one side. So I'm going to subtract the x, and I get zero equals x squared minus x minus six. What are the factors of negative six that sum to negative one? Negative three, positive two, and then set them each equal to zero. X equals three x equals negative 2. So there's actually two answers this time, negative 2 and 3. Well, there's a variable that's squared and not squared, you always factor. Yep, get it to one side. And, and I, I keep the x squared terms positive. I think it's easier. Doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but I think it's easier.
Then we moved on to logs. And there are lots more practice on those, okay, on the quiz review. I just wanted to go over some quick ones. Then we moved on to logs, right? So for the logs, we want to get it into exponential and then figure it out from there. Unless you can do it in mental math, which is fine too. Oh, these are the ones that were the shortcuts that we had on yep. the one slide. So I could work through this, right? The 2 comes over and picks up the x. 2 to the x equals 1 fourth. I could try to do the one to one, so I could bring the four to the top by making it negative exponent, make it negative two, or this is where you wanna get good at these because it will save you time. What would I have to raise two to to get it to go to the bottom and be four? Negative, negative two. So if you see, all right, so Vanessa, for your number 16, it actually said to use a graphing utility to graph this. Let's just say it didn't. So if it said y equals negative ln of x plus six, First thing I would do is move the six to the other side and I'd get y minus six equals negative ln of x. This negative has to go away, so multiply by negative one here and I end up with negative y plus six equals ln of x. ln becomes log base e of x and if we were to approximate that as three and then this comes over and picks it up. So three negative y plus six equals x. And then I'd be plugging into those y values so 3, negative, negative 1 would be 1 plus 6, 3, 0 plus 6, and 3, negative 1 plus 6, which would be 5. All of these are going to be huge numbers, which is why it's so far up. Like if you go up here, you'll see that it goes up high on the graph over here and also doesn't get close to the x-axis until it's way far out. So the first thing I would just say is be prepared that if it wasn't a graphing calculator that this shifts my asymptote or sorry it doesn't shift my asymptote because it's a vertical asymptote so my asymptote is still at zero i know my domain is still at zero to positive infinity and then the x-intercept would be if i plugged in zero here so be three to the six you won't have numbers that large on your quiz nor will you have the negative on front so don't stress out too much about it just know like a variation on a question okay nate this is your number five so it says to find the domain of the log function and then find the x-intercept and the vertical asymptote. So this time, because the negative's on the front, it's gonna impact the y. So first I would say, you wanna move the two to the other side and then convert it so that it's four to the y minus two equals x. Or sorry, actually, wait, I lost the negative. This has to be negative one. So negative y plus two now equals a positive log four x. Now this picks this up, so it'd be four to the negative y plus two equals x. So when you plug in for the y values, four to the negative negative one plus two, four negative zero plus two, and four to the one plus two. So this goes away, or just becomes one, and I get four to the third. This is four squared, and this is four should be negative one plus two, which is to the first. So this would be 64, 16, and four. So when you go to graph this, it's kind of like what happened with the one before. 64 is all the way over here. Then let's say this is 16, and then let's say this is four, this would be a negative one. The vertical asymptote, because there's nothing inside the parentheses, is still at zero, zero which means there's probably points plugged in here. If I had kept going negative with this, like negative two, negative three, I'd find more values. But I'm just gonna go through, this was four, one. This should be negative one, sorry, it's flipped. So it looks like this, the negative on the front is reflecting it, which is causing that upside down shift. Your domain is still zero to positive infinity. Your x-intercept is still in the middle, 16, zero. And our vertical asymptote is still at x equals zero. All right, then Sophia's 15. I think you said just do the domain. So because this is eight minus x would equal zero, 
I'd get x equals 8, and that's where my vertical asymptote would be at 8 there. Okay, and then when I plug in those points, when I plug in the x, y, negative 1, 0, and 1, this would change to y equals log base e of 8 minus x comes over, picks it up, subtract the e, or the 8, sorry, and I get negative x. So yesterday we said it was probably easier to plug these in and then make sure I do the negative at the end than it was to move the negative over because everybody got confused with the exponent. So we're going to do it that way. I'm going to plug in the negative 1, and I'm going to treat this as 3. 3 to the negative 1 minus 8 would be 1 third minus 8, negative 7 and 2 thirds. Then I'm going to treat it as 3 again, 3 to the 0 minus 8, which is 1 minus 8, negative 7. Then 3 to the first minus 8, 3 minus 8, which is negative 5. But all of those equal negative x, which means these signs change. So negative x equal negative 7 and 2 thirds, which means x equals 7 and 2 thirds. Negative x equal negative 7, which means x equals 7. And negative x equal negative 5, which means x equals 5. So when I go to plot these points, it's positive 7, let's say this is 7 and 8, 7 and 2 thirds and negative 1 positive 7 and 0, 6, 5, and 1. Vertical asymptote was at 8, which means my graph is getting as close to 8 without touching it as possible. And the more numbers, if I kept plugging in, the more numbers I get, I would see that curve go back to the left, which is why the domain goes negative infinity up to 8. So I go from left to right on that, which flips the domain.